Hey guys, welcome back to RescueNet EPCR training video. I am Matt Cox from the Eastern Division. This video is going to be a quick update for you guys on some changes that we've made to the actual RescueNet program just prior to rollout. So we've already logged in, got all of our logon information, and set our current crew information. If you guys need a refresher on that, please see the previous Zol video series, and it'll bring you up to this point. So. Brief reminder, remember that the PCRs are going to be coming directly from the CAD. They're going to come with the master incident number, and if you were to scroll over, it'll have the address, crew member information, and PCR ID. So simply put, what you'll do is you'll find that PCR, highlight it, request, and it'll remove it from pending up into your inbox to where you're able to work on it. So for example, we got Mr. Ted Funkenheimer, if we wanted to highlight and open it, simply highlight click open and it takes you in you'll see that we've already filled out a large majority of the information one of the concerns that when we did the training back in March and April for both Eastern and Western divisions is that the times from CAD were not locked out that they were editable that is no longer the case if it is a put CAD pushed PCR you'll simply be able to see the times but you will not be able to edit them they are now read only and you've been locked out which brings us to our next point one of the things that was being discussed that I told you guys back in the training sessions is that what do we do if we have multiple patients? Well, right now with Siren, we use the same run number, but what makes it a difference is the patient X of Y account. We're no longer going to do X of Y, and we're not going to get multiple run numbers. You'll maintain the same incident number and master incident number. You're simply going to do add a patient, but there's going to be a little bit of a curveball with that. So let's show you kind of what we're talking about. We got Mr. Ted Funkenheimer here. We know that he was involved in MVC, but we have another patient that we had to transport. All went on the same unit, so simply what you'll do is highlight and click Add Patient. It'll open up another manually generated PCR from you. This PCR did not come from the CAD and has not touched the server, so be very, very cautious. You can still delete this PCR. But you'll notice that it did copy over the CAD information, but it only got us to a certain point. It only copied us up to on scene. What does that mean for you? Well, for now, until we get an update pending this fall, we're going to have to actually transpose over manually from the PCR that was generated from CAD. We're going to have to transpose that information over into this PCR. When you add a patient or you manually generate a PCR, it is not going to be updated by the CAD at any point in time. That is going to be fixed hopefully this fall pending an update from RescueNet. We're going to have to wait and see. But in the meantime, what you'd simply do, go back to your inbox. You know that Fred or Ted Funkenheimer and this PCR were from the same scene. Both were transported, so all you need to do is simply transpose the information. Go into Ted because that was the one that was actually pushed from the CAD. You can tell because the PCR ID is a positive number versus a negative number, the one that you copied. Open up that PCR. Go to your times information, and you can either look at your times here. Very, very difficult to see. The easiest part to see it in is review under time summary. And you can see that you can see your information a lot easier. But you'll notice that the CAD information is updated up to the point of on scene. So all you're really going to have to find is your transport time, which should be down at the bottom, which will be depart scene, your destination time, and the time that you went 10-8. You'll manually write down this information and then transpose it over. It's very, very important that we're accurate with this information. There are going to be typos. There will be mistakes. We need to try to limit those the best that we can. It's going to be a little bit hectic. I understand it's, it's asking you guys to do a little bit more than the norm. Just try to hang in there with us because once the update comes in, you guys will no longer have to worry about that. But we are still a few months away, hopefully, best case scenario, away from that update. So stay tuned. But for now we've already written down our information now we just need to go back to our other run ticket open it up come into our times we know that we need our depart scene time so you can either scroll through here the easiest way to do it is simply do can't find to be able to manually type it in so we know that we went at destination at 12.03.29 and we need to change this date to April 23rd 2013 so we've confirm that all of our information is correct on the when we started transporting select next and it will take you when you got destination 
do can't find, type in the information next, and then you'll go to the 10 8 and enter the time. Be very, very cautious once again. Please, please, please put the information in that was transposed over from the initial PCR. Don't be kind of ball hawking it, making sure, hey, I think we were, we were on destination at this time. Just simply transpose it over. If there's some time errors, notify your supervisor so that they can get with the SSCs and try to figure out if maybe there's a better way that we can correct it. We can't just freelance it, though. We have to make sure that we go through certain parameters in order to get it fixed. So just simply transpose it over. One of the other changes that I told you guys that I was looking at making is under objective, the trauma section. If you guys remember, trauma was a jumbled mess, really didn't have any kind of rhyme or reason to it, had very, very poor information. Well, no longer. I have organized this entire field. There are some things that it's going to be lacking that you guys will notice that I didn't catch. You guys will be provided an email address at rollout that you guys will be able to email me ideas uh, from both divisions, hey, I found this medication missing, hey, this past medical history should be on there, or hey, I've got this idea for trauma, or even the program in general. Please feel free to shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you guys and try to make this program a little bit better. In the trauma section, you'll see that there's a lot of different things. They're basically based off of MOE, and then we start getting a little bit more in detail. For example, let's say we had an elderly patient that fell. We can generalize the distance, so say standing fall one to six feet caused by general weakness fatigue and these are multi-select fields put whatever applies and then surface what kind of surface did they fall on so you guys can got to get the point MVC is a lot more in depth I'll take you to that field real quick and you can see that there's a lot of information that you can pick from really and truly this is the same information that was in siren it's just been you're gonna to have to navigate it a little bit differently still has the same general basis some added information some changed information to try to make it a little bit more accurate like I said you guys are the best at understanding what we need to do as as a company to better document shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to take that under consideration and try to figure out how to develop it to make this program better the other change that we have is under review under research survey you guys have Ochemsis fields now in Siren at the very, very end of the program. Research survey is going to be the exact same, just it's not going to be asking for specific times like when did you notify the hospital of a trauma, a STEMI, or a stroke. That information is located under interventions. Don't forget your quick log category, that's your, your past to success. So let's say we had a STEMI patient, we know we go under cardiac. Hey, there's a STEMI alert, it's going to ask some information, it's prior to arrival, no. ED alerted yes. Were you successful in contacting them? Did they answer the radio or the phone? Hopefully the answer is yes. And then of course you guys want to be as accurate as you can with these times. Keep in mind that STEMI and stroke alerts, trauma alerts, all this stuff is being tracked. Especially with the, the STEMI and the stroke here recently, especially in the Eastern Division. I know the Western Division has already had a long-standing history uh, with local hospitals when it, when it comes to STEMI time, STEMI alerts, when do we transmit the 12 lead. In the East, we are starting to pick up on that, so we want to make sure that we document these times as accurately as possible. I'm not asking you guys to sit there and annotate every little thing that you do real time, but you guys can get a rough estimate. Okay, I know I put the monitor on, put the 12 lead on, I saw the STEMI, transmitted it, boom, I knew I called the hospital right then and there. So you guys can kind of rough guesstimate, be as accurate as possible. We are actively attending meetings with hospitals to try to figure out how we can better improve STEMI, stroke care, etc. So we've entered our STEMI alert information, so now we need to go to review and go under research survey, and you'll notice that it says to tap add. You'll simply tap add, and we know that there's specific data that we want to enter in just like we did with siren the only difference is you'll come through here and you'll click okay did I notify the hospital yes I did it was a STEMI and you'll see that enters your information well I know that I need to add a lot more information than that so add STEMI 12 lead interpreter was a paramedic STEMI probable yes identified a field STEMI was it transmitted? This should always be yes. And keep in mind, just a friendly reminder, we want to make sure we put the first and last name, the date of birth, the run number, any kind of demographic information that you can put on that screen that you guys are already very familiar with. We need to make sure that we do that before we're doing 12 leads. That way, if we identify a STEMI with 12 lead 1, we can transmit 12 lead 1 and know that all that demographic is on. That way, we can go ahead and notify the hospital and expedite the process. Is 12 lead used? Yes, it was. 
And then, of course, was track notified? Yes. And trauma triage criteria if it's a trauma. And then the track tracking number is always going to be your incident number. So that's where these field data are going to lie. I've already written rules to help you guys out to remember to do this based off certain parameters, but try to do your best. The, the rules aren't perfect. They're always going to be in the development process to try to perfect it to help you guys remember to do this stuff. Just try to be active and proactive and say, okay, I know it didn't prompt me to put this field in. I know I need to enter this field. Feel free to enter it. Even if you're not sure, just go ahead and enter it. It's not going to hurt anything. So that covers the main changes uh, that has been going on with Siren. Pretty much most of it's the same. Some medics in the east, some medics in the west have been able to kind of mess around with the program, learn your way through it. Once again, just let me reassure you, it, it's an EPCR system. You guys are already used to it. You guys are already very familiar with Siren. The flow is just a little bit different. The information is the same. It's just a little bit different looking. The big difference is going to be how we transmit life pack data. When we roll out July 1, you guys will have a user guide that's going to be on every single truck in both divisions. It's going to be binded. It's going to be available for your use on the truck. You guys are going to be visiting with Z-Medics that are going to be at corporate and out and about in the field. You guys are going to have plenty of support in both divisions. They're going to be there to answer questions. Before your shift, we're going to walk you through how to transmit the data, what to look for, what's a COM port, what are we looking for as far as being able to actually transmit reliably, what does it mean push and pull. Our z are going to cover that with you guys. There is a, a strategy. We're going to make sure that we are there for you. So I just want to make sure you guys understand that. So all in all, not too many changes to the program. There are little bits and pieces here and there. We're actively adding medications to both uh, known drug allergies and patient medical history as far as medication and history. Once again, I'd like to encourage you guys, you guys find something missing, shoot us an email. You guys will get the email address that roll out. Shoot us an email. We'll be more than happy to add some information that we can find. So this is Matt Cox signing off. If you guys have any questions, hit me up.